Hey everyone, before we delve into today's videos, can you please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to help me boost the algorithm and because uh, I just want to quit my job, basically. Thank you. <laughs> I lost custody of my son because the judge decided that being in the military and being a military family was too unstable for my son. I have been my son's primary caregiver since birth and any of you who have ever applied for a move away request know that the stability is the stability of the relationship with the primary parent, not the stability of location. And unfortunately, we just got a judge who was new to family law, had only been a judge for two years and never spent any time in family law as an attorney. And today is day nine of not talking to my son because dad won't let us talk to each other, even though it's in the court order. And dad doesn't spend any time with our son and since he's had custody of him for the last nine days he has not spent more than an hour with him a day and the rest of the time he's been with other family members or friends and while well, i'm a stay-at-home mom and i am trying like hell to figure things out with my attorney but attorneys are incredibly expensive so if enough of you watch this video Maybe I can get enough followers to start selling things on TikTok shop or promoting things on TikTok shop so I can pay for the attorney fees and potentially get my son back. I'm doing everything I can. I'm trying to figure out how about moving back to where we were, even though we didn't live there. I don't know. I don't know what else to do, guys. I'm at a loss. Today's been really hard. I don't know what's happening here, the underlying message, um, besides the fact that she divorced the husband. Now, whenever I see a woman cry on the internet, I'm assuming it's... It, it, there's something off about it. I'm not... I don't know what exactly, but there just is. Now, you are not telling us the whole story. You're not telling us the whole details. You haven't spoken to your son in nine days, yet somehow you know that uh, the father hasn't been with him for more than an hour a day and also that the son has been uh, living with uh, different uh, relatives like how do you know all these details but you haven't uh, spoken to your son like obviously if you've been speaking with someone else then you can speak with him too right other than that i think it, it is a tragedy whenever a spouse uses the kids as a pawn like as a as a way to get back at your uh, ex-partner I, I think it's just disgraceful kids should not go through this kids should just have two loving parents even if they are separated let's just say that they love and respect each other still for the sake of the kids at least give them that because kids will de desperately need that uh, love and affection at least to see it you know after my divorce hearing, where I was married for 10 years, I was a traditional wife, I was a stay-at-home mother to four children. One of them is disabled. She had four open heart surgeries. I have been their primary parent since the moment they entered this universal realm. I'm the person that they have known from sun up to sundown and through the night. They do have two parents, but the way our family was structured, I was the one that took care of them. He was a little bit busy doing other things. I wrongfully assumed that courts would see the situation for what it was and give me everything that I wanted and I would be able to remain their primary parent and remain in good, like just everything would be amazing and that's not what happened. I had to not only split custody, but in my, in my opinion, it was horrible because this person doesn't even have their own home. He is living with his romantic partner. So I was like, how is the court gonna give you 50% custody? You don't even have a fucking home. You're an actual hobosexual. You have no home, no job, nothing. There's no way a court is gonna give you 50% custody. They sure as fuck did. Not only did they, they awarded him child support because he quit his job right before the divorce hearing to throw off our income. And then the court used a really fucked up calculation for my income. And it was just like literally the worst of the worst of the worst. My attorney said her jaw was on the floor. She has never had a divorce end up so lopsided in her whole fucking career. And then she wished me luck and I was on my way. If I didn't have the money to pay her, sucks to suck. In the franticness of like, oh my God, I have to give this person 
some of, I'm going to be homeless. Do you know what I mean? Like, how am I going to pay child support and pay my rent and all my bills when I'm barely making it by myself? Needless to say, it's been five years. I never went homeless. I never lost anything. I never lost my kids. And I've only gotten stronger and better. And it was because in the franticness after that, I called an attorney thinking, somebody has to fix this. Somebody's going to make it better. And I called an attorney. I told him the whole story. And he was like, do you want me to tell you the real fucking truth? talk to you like you're my fucking sister or do you want me to give you like the polite answer like he could hear the vulnerability and the 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 desperation in my voice he was like get the fuck over it divorces suck people get bad results and if you continue to try to fight with him in the courts you're only going to make yourself look worse you can be angry you can be mad but you need to just shut the fuck up put your head down and focus on your life with your kids because the longer you sit in that anger about how it didn't go your way you're pop you're stopping yourself you're slowing down your healing you're you're yeah you're slowing down your healing it was like a light clicked in my head like you're right it's over the divorce is over the decisions have been made i can either accept it and move forward and focus on my life and focus on solutions and focus on at least I don't have this ugly fucking dusty in my bed in my body in my anything anymore and that's what I did and life got better the minute you stop looking at all the problems and start thinking of solutions Mm -hmm. everything starts to get better man just know that the woman that you're with is gonna heal up and move on way quicker than you think after the relationship is over. I don't care if it's divorce or whatever. Trust me, when you give people like enough money and resources, are they really gonna care about the ex at the end of the day? If you have all the comfort in the world and money and resources and what social status, you name it, are you gonna really suffer? And this is what's going on here. It's because people not only do they want each other but they kind of like need each other for the family they need each other for the resources and the money and everything else so a lot of marriages and a lot of human interactions just become like business move it's a partnership it's not really something that's based on feeling or desire or you know just passion or, or, or none of that stuff that's just like something that you see in movies and nothing more and it's really sad but it's the it's the world that we live in difference in like being a father and being a mother like i feel like most fathers get to just live their lives without like the worry of the children they don't have to schedule their lives around the children they kind of make plans with their friends all willy-nilly it doesn't matter because you know you have your wife at home watching the babies but then when you're like a mother your whole life is revolved around your children When you make plans, I feel like you kind of have to talk to your spouse a couple days in advance. Like, hey, does this work for you so that I can go do this? Why is that? And why don't dads have like the bare minimum of like respect for the mother of their children to do the same thing? I just don't understand why women feel the need to invalidate a man's experience because they're basically resentful that their husbands have freedom. A woman's idea of freedom is being able to get up and go. But last time I checked, a lot of these men are working to be able to provide the necessities for his family. And guess what? He doesn't have a choice to stay home. He doesn't have a choice to call in sick. He doesn't have a choice to change jobs that maybe he likes better because he's thinking about his family 24 seven. But a lot of these women get so entitled because they get used to their lifestyles that they cannot even comprehend a lot of these sacrifices that their husbands are making. And let's be honest, a lot of women are control freaks. So even when the dads step in and wanna help with packing lunches or putting the kids to bed or getting them dressed to go out on a family outing. Women cannot handle it because they want to be control freaks. They want to be perfectionists. They're going to bitch about every little thing. Oh, you didn't put the right snack in the bag. You didn't put the right drink in the bag. Did you remember the goldfish? So eventually these men are like, fuck it. If I can't do anything right, I'm not going to do anything at all. And at the end of the day, I don't understand why you have to shit on your husbands. If you want like PTO time or time to go do something, just freaking say that. Learn how to communicate like an adult. A lot of these women don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to talk about their needs. They just hold it in and then they make posts like this basically. 
But what we're not going to do is invalidate the men that do it every single day by themselves without a complaint. There's a lot of single dads out here that do it without child support. And you're not going to take that away from the dads that are good. Just because you don't have a husband or don't know men around you that step up and be dads and real ass husbands doesn't mean that you have to shit on the rest of them. Okay, bye. I do love the fact that a lot of women uh, are just gonna go on TikTok and moan and bitch about the relationships or whatever it is, but they will never say, oh, this is what I did wrong. I never hear a woman say that. It's always like everyone else is doing something wrong except for them. They never admit to doing anything wrong. They're always the victims. It's like funny how that works, huh?